Welcome to ATG. The jump video, I wish I had. Everything's going to be pretty organic. I get a lot of joy out of being able to dunk a basketball now in my 30s after reaching my 20s, having never grabbed the rim. Coach Ben played for me. I don't know if he could even touch the rim. Going from a guy that could barely slap backboard and now is throwing down windmill dunks is unbelievable. This is not product placement. Uh, if it's jump day, then I like to make sure I'm pepped up. But for any ATG workout, we start with the sled. Sled balance, squat balance, jump balance. If you can get those three concepts, you're gonna get everything I know about jumping that's really meaningful to me, that's helped me and a lot of other people. You don't as, need caffeine as a young kid though? Yeah, if I was watching this younger, I wouldn't. Now, in my 30s, one day a week, get to go to the court and jump. I like to be amped up. So Alyssa and I are both sledding. We have an appropriate amount of weight here. Sleds and turves vary in friction a ton. This is actually how we start every ATG workout. And this is how it was before the world changed a few years ago when gyms were shut down. Just there is good, babe. We mark it off so we end up getting 100 yards a set. It varies on the session. The sled has friction on the turf. That makes it harder for the legs. Notice the legs are pushing through the toes every step, whether going forward or backward. This is like athletic strength. This is like Mother Nature's natural strength exercise. When we're going forward, the feet are getting stronger, the knee is getting stronger over the toe, the glutes are getting stronger to extend. Thinking about long steps tends to make it burn most. When you go backward, notice your weight can move the sled. So thinking about quick steps tends to make the muscles work more. So we think about quick steps backward and long steps forward. We're getting cardio to be in shape. Here we go, babe. Long steps, yep. Try to keep up with me. I actually think about jumping every one of these steps. Jump, 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 jump. Nice. And now here, backward. This concept of getting stronger backward is what got my knees off painkillers. This is the foundation of jumping higher. It's just not having knee pain when you jump. One more will take us to 100 yards. So with this, you can burn off body fat, strengthen your legs. With every step, you're strengthening through your foot. Athletic positions, a squat, a deadlift, a leg press, leg extension. None of these things are you strengthening through the foot and the lower leg. You will you feel the burn, babe? too. What's up, brother? Say what's up to YouTube. Young Bucket. Maybe you follow him on YouTube. Fomer Simpson YouTube channel. Perfect product placement for the Fomer Simpson YouTube channel. But a large reason why I even tried to go on social media. Charlie and his brother. Uh, really successful YouTube channel. You guys get on here, I'm catching my breath. The thing about the sled is that you can start it immediately. The weight's not bearing down on you, so it's fundamentally gentle and allows you to get strong in athletic position. So let me get a weight for him. Oh yeah. While they, you guys are gonna do four rounds. I'm gonna come in, let me know when you finish the third round. Okay, keep pace with each other. I want to show you something though. True, we can take it over here. Your treadmill at the gym, if you don't turn it on, might have some resistance. This actually has variable resistance. So my dad, this is the first piece of equipment that he's obsessed with, in his words. My mom will get on the sled. She likes the sled. She likes this. But for my dad, he likes this ease of use. You could be watching TV and you could be working your way backward. The stronger you get backward, you're getting stronger in this position, which is where the knee hurts when you jump. And by doing it for a good amount of time, you're able to get blood flow, because it's hard to get blood deep into the joint to heal. So we're not just doing this for the muscles, you're actually doing this to heal deep inside the knee. So even if you think, oh, I don't have turf and a sled, these you can buy now, it takes about four months, and these will be Depending on when you see this video, this is YouTube. By the time you see this, these will probably be commonplace. And I'm going to show you more. Think about pushing the sled. I'll, have, I'll coach Alyssa through this too, but I know my tools. So I know zero program. Boom. I can get in here one leg. 
stretch to the Achilles, strength, holding that knee position. This is just like forward sled in the sense of getting similar benefit. Two, three. All right, we're gonna get a, we're gonna get a live look. I wanna see who can get down and back there the fastest. Ready, go, go. So this is not to be cruel, it's just to show you athletic strengthening. Quartz, one of the highest jumpers in the world. His legs are in a jump position. This is one of our online members. Pete happens to be nearby, so he's getting to train with us. I wish I could update YouTube videos because we're gonna get him to his first dunk. We've gotten lots of people to their first dunks here. You ever feel anything like the sled? No. <laughs> so, backward treadmill could mimic the backward part of the sled. Knee over toe calf raise. Babe, why don't you get in here on two legs, go really slow. You only have to reach, so let's say you only feel comfortable here. Over time, you can get stronger and reach the knees farther. So you have two legs, one leg, and you can progress high reps. So I can go with or without a sled because I understand my tools. And next to her, actually where she is right there, I can show you here. Nice. So in terms of getting the feet stronger, the Achilles stronger, and the knee over the toe, and then babe, you can come around here. And so now with my body weight, I can get stronger in the same motion as the backward sled controlling down. So we tend to use all these tools in a program, but even if you use certain ones, like zero program, you would just be doing stuff like this, and you can get a lot of the effects of a sled. If you have sled on turf, you might not need as much of this. Why don't you get here, babe? Yep. And start working it. Step ups? Yep. So this is a backward step up, just like you have your backward sledding. So between the knee over toe calf raise and a backward step up, you can get the effects of having a sled. So we're not, I'm not trying to say that this is better than a sled, it's just an option. And as you get stronger, then you can just go higher. So we do these for high reps, and you can just keep going higher. So you have tools for all options. So I'm considering this the first of three parts of the video. I'll check my notes because I want to make sure you get everything, all the key data. Yep, we've covered the key points for this step one, which is just getting pain free in the positions you're gonna to need to jump. That alone has helped a lot of people jump higher and you have options whether you have equipment or no equipment. You don't have to do, the wedge actually makes it harder. You could just as easily do this without, without the wedge. Yep. So you always have tools, you always have options to get similar effects. Now part two, um, and we'll call this sled balance meaning not just going forward with the sled, but going backward, and we looked at ways to mimic that. So we call that sled balance, so being balanced in our abilities on the sled. Now we're gonna go to squat balance. We can come from about here, so we can see these various angles. So this would be like my first warm-up set. We're in the gym today, and by using chains on the bar, how much weight do you think we're at right here versus here? So the weight gets, the weight gets heavier, and I'll do a more, I'll do a more abbreviated warm up right to something that I know will start to challenge me. Um, because the idea is that a squat can make you jump higher, but squat balance is gonna mean we wanna be strong through the entire range of the squat. I thought that I was doing strength training to jump because of getting strong in about this range of motion. So hip and knee extending through a partial range. We only consider that two of six areas to train to jump higher. And those are only partial. So here's something that's gonna challenge me. So there's an exercise I can do to jump higher. It's only two of six zones that we're gonna cover in this squat balance. Alyssa might not jump in right here, but she could start squatting all the way down. She already did the sled. If she's doing the step up, she's working at top range. She could start squatting all the way down. And I'll pull an ATG buddy for her. What's up, brother? And if you think about squat balance, well, actually, Alyssa can demonstrate a wonderful split squat. Why don't you go right here to the camera, babe? Yep. And you can put, you can go sideways to the camera there. You can put your right foot up there. 
So here's from our zero program. We master this with high repetitions. And Drew can put on screen to show regressions of this. The front foot being higher is easier. We use assistance. But the point is, she could jump higher. And even an elite jumper could jump higher off high repetitions, body weight, by getting balanced on this, if that's balancing up their body to a weak point. Now, I'm going to have two more guys get in here and demonstrate the squat for context. Um, Connor, you'll go first. Okay. What's your height and weight, sir? I'm 6'3", 153 pounds. All right. So I'm about 185 right now. I think he has the best jump balance in the world. Third concept we'll cover. You think you can squat this right here? I'll give it a go, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll spot you. <laughs> Connor's not the world's strongest squatter, but he's strong. Oh, yeah. Nice. Good. He's going to rack it. So for his height, his squat balance, meaning his strength through a full range of motion, and the other exercises in relation to that are really good. And then the third concept, jump balance, means jumping every which way. So. Good job. Now Thanks, Fernando. Sir. Now Fernando's going to embarrass us. What do you how do you want to how do you want to embarrass us? Let's look at our body types. Get in here, babe. Throw in the, the, the fourth back. All right. So but no, I have more weight, I have to squat more. If if Connor has the body type of an Olympic high jumper and Fernando well, they're gonna have different bodies. Fernando might be able to beat the crap out of someone in a fight or hit someone. Fernando's sport is football. So Connor's body type might be able to get him in Olympic high jump. He, pursues dunking, but it's that body type. Fernando's a pro football body type. So it's different, it's different body types. One is neither wrong nor right. Both of them have jumped higher from this concept of squat balance, meaning strengthening through a full range of motion. So this was, we really discovered a lot of this with Fernando squatting, that not just squatting, but squatting with chains all the way down, we found like, whoa, that's a cheat code to jump higher. Because usually it's like, oh, half squat so you can use enough weight. Because if you go all the way down, you don't use enough weight. But full squat, builds the knees more. Well, add chains. Now you have both. Going to embarrass us? And Fernando will, can probably just rep this out. So with the chains plus the weight, he's able to get the full range of motion for the knee, and he's able to challenge himself through the whole range. So it's just putting, putting the two concepts together. Nice. So I can jump higher from this, Fernando can jump higher from this, Connor can jump higher from this. Let's not waste your time. What's the exact opposite of what we did right there? So the knee was extending. What about the knee <laughs> flexing? We've done endless videos on this, but this is something that I was nowhere near being able to do. And this I would call squat balance, meaning being balanced to my squat. Now, Alyssa, you have to try it. I'm sorry. We haven't trained her back up to the ability to do this. She did one before kids. But it's for a demonstration. If Alyssa wants to jump higher than me. You want to try it on the bench? Or you want pound to try for pound bench? strength matters. I think the bench might be easier. Well, why don't you fight down and show that? Okay. And then we can elevate the bench, and maybe we could show that. Okay. I'll start stacking up. Let's start stacking up to elevate. We'll put it to the right of her. So you could start with what she's doing, fighting down. You can just do it one time. Good job. Good. So that's, that's applying the concept of no, squat I'm just balance. I could try the actual bench with you holding my legs. It's okay because this is how we would progress it in person. All right. I'm determined to actually get it back. Excuse me. All right. With ATG, every exercise scales in ability level. So let's try this. You'll lay flat, your hands will be at your side, and you're gonna jump. You got this, baby, you got it. Oh, okay, good, good. Glutes contract first. Got it. Because if the butt goes up first, you don't really know how much you were lifting. If the glute contracts first, now your abs are off the bench and you have to keep the shoulder up. Try again. That's right. Walk your way down. All right, yep. So this, lay flat. Yeah, I'm just trying to mentally prepare for that too. <laughs> It's a lot of pressure and we haven't even been working on it. Right. Do a practice of just contracting your glutes to raise your abs off the bench. There you go. That's how it occurs. Just like in athleticism, that's how it occurs. The glutes contract. One, two. Yep. There you go. And now fight down. So this scales the ability. Good job. And you still have hamstring curls and such to scale that ability. 
So now we've looked at, we've looked at two things. So this squat, we had, we had the knee extending. The hip was also extending on the squat. We also do a full range of motion seated good morning for the hip extending. But the point is that when you jump, the knee is gonna extend, the hip is gonna extend. But now as soon as you're going for like a jump off one foot, or if you have to run into the jump, now the knee is flexing. We'll go over here. The hip will be flexing. Speaking of scale, well, this is Alyssa's favorite exercise. That's right. So here's half my weight, and I'll bang out our ATG standard 20 reps. So what's happening now? My hip is flexing. So when you run, this is now something we've seen that is a huge difference between the natural athletes and those who get strong in the weight room but can't run fast and jump high like they want to. So I'm 16. doing strength training, measurable strength training for hip flexion. 19, 20. Great standard, surpassing the standard. Yep, I'm just trying to get. All right, I'm starting to feel that. So now we've covered a fourth area and we can head over here for the fifth and the sixth. You saw Alyssa and I demonstrate a calf raise. We do various forms of calf raises. Now I put this heavy here as an example. So here's 44 pounds, full range of motion. I've had division one strength coaches visit who did not feel optimistic about making people jump higher. Meaning a lot of people think, you know, you're just whatever genetics you have, it's pretty much what you're destined for. And they couldn't do this one time. So now when you run into a jump, this happens right through the heel. Boom, all that force. So let's say theoretically, if I'm like 185, let's say theoretically that if someone same weight as me can't do this once. So if I'm much stronger through the ankle. Connor, you think you can lift this? Yeah. Let's see what you got. So pound for pound, the freakiest jumpers we've seen do have some outlier qualities. That's amazing. Fernando, you get in here after. Can I try it? <laughs> I mean, you can definitely try it. I don't know if it's a great idea. It's okay, I'll try it. So pound for pound, his ankles are extremely strong. Oh boy. All right, let me just try. Okay, you straighten the legs. It'll either work or not work. Straighten the legs, flex the quads. Straighten the legs. Yeah, I can't do it. Okay, so <laughs> she's actually doing a hell of a job today because the point is to give context. It's so easy to say, this is the number one thing for jumping or this is, well, we got six different zones for jumping, meaning the, the ankle goes like that. The ankle also goes like that. The knee goes like that. It also goes like that. The hip goes like that. It also goes like that. So we have six different zones of lower body training. This makes us very optimistic about helping people jump higher because we're making the body easier to run and jump. I'm pretty sure he does this easier for fight. That was tough. Pound for pound, how much do you weigh? How much do you weigh? 210. 210 versus 150. Do you want to try 25% more weight? It was right. lifting me up. Yeah. Opposite way. Right. So this is a really cool video because we're definitely covering some unique concepts on here that relate to strength for jumping. Now, in addition to those, the biggest difference I would say between running and jumping is the upper body. If you look at a 100 meter sprinter versus a high jumper, they actually have similar proportions of the leg. Like if you ask me these six zones, like improve at all of them, like improve at all your main extension and flexion, improve at all six zones. But like Connor, like let's go to, let's go to the board. Let's look at Friday. ATG basics program. Connor and I are in the same program. Alyssa and I are on the same program. Cork's on the same program. We scale these things. What, you, what did you do of this session right here? I did external rotations, the sled, and maybe shoulder press. <laughs> okay, so he did some shoulder to be able to swing his arms to keep up with his jump. I then was trying to do 20 dips in a row, getting my, my, my shoulder below my elbow on our, each rep. 12 full chin ups, getting my pecs to touch the bar on each rep. Things that will make my upper body bigger proportionally than his, I wanna run as fast as I can jump as high as I can. I have shit genetics, so I'm not even the best example of these. A guy on the court will be the best overall example of these, Xavier, who can crush every single thing. Oh, there's Marcus. So 
we're going to be going from here to the world's highest jumping weekly pickup <laughs> basketball game uh, to show you guys some stuff. You definitely got this. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah! All right, that, that, er that earned a product placement. Let's get that. Bring out the surfo. I got the, I got so we, the with a long workout going to the court, our other product placement in addition to Jocko, it's just, it's not product placement, it's literally, we like to hydrate. But this also has essential amino acids, so it's almost like it's keeping, it's keeping minerals and actually protein in the system that you can be sipping. So super long workouts. Now this, I believe, is safe for any age. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like it's replacing what you're, what you're losing. It's building muscle. It's amino acids and electrolytes. Yeah. It's, it's simple. It's not rocket science. Yeah. We, we don't want to be like eating right now and taking mineral tablets or something. Right. So good shit. Thank you. <laughs> Fernando, orange flavor. Nice. Super nice. Super nice. Xavier showed up. Mr. ATG, uh, he can crush all these different, oh, flip over there, Connor, for a second. I just look over there and I see this going on. This is so much tougher than it looks to do with strict form, and we do these for 20 reps per set. I'm just showing you like how much there is to gain just by mastering your body weight on the basics, even if you didn't have a sled. So a perfect contrast over here um, to Xavier, who, can, who equally can go out, run under 4-4 four, four and 40s. Go ahead and start pumping. You want to count for him? Count for him. Um, so he's getting a nice range of motion, and we, we want to be able to do at least 20 per set. The racks are a little, little wobbly. And he just showed up. I put, he, he could have done any, he could have smoked me on the low cable, smoked me on the Nordic, smoked me on the squat, every single thing. And he's up toward, I've measured him on Vertec, I believe it was 48 and a half inch maximum vertical. And we're talking under six foot, getting can hit his head on the rim, so. Holy shit. So, there you go. So I wanted to finish this great example to also finish with upper body to show the context. If you want maximum, maximum speed and one foot and two foot jumping, you can be an overall beast. You can have it all. He's leading the way, I'm trying to be like that. Before we head out, last thing in here. Fernando and I have been strength training a long time. Court just came and out repped us on the tib. Take it to failure, so. Just showing that strength matters, and oftentimes when people get confused on the subject, they just don't fully understand the subject. So this is, this is one of six main lower body functions, ankle, knee, hip. They both flex and extend. There's plenty of other little functions too, but man, imagine trying to jump higher like I was, thinking that I was genetically tapped out and would never dunk a basketball and had destroyed knees, and all I had to do was change how I was training. Good shit, bro. And he's one of the world's highest jumpers. Throw some crazy montage there. <laughs> Part three, jump balance. I think Connor is the best in the world at jump balance. He's gonna demo it, and then we're gonna go into more depth than any video out there. Connor, I'll rebound for you. What do you got? Right leg. What are you doing now? Left leg. Left leg coming in. Right left. Right left jump. Left right jump. Nice, and then stay nearby, because I'm gonna show you some. So, for me, just from training alone, I found out that I could dunk with a left-right plant. Let's watch, watch the left knee. That knee goes over the toes. It actually builds that side more, or overuses it. Years later, then from practicing, I was able to dunk right-left. So, the first thing to establish for yourself is can you dunk or not? Because none of what we just did will get us to jump that much higher. Now, jumping the different plants will help because it makes you stronger for the hole. But now I want you to compare, and Connor, I want you to try to get your head over the rim. And I want you to think about the four dunks he just did. Forget basketball. Think of his human body as anatomy. And tell me those four, or this jump, which one is gonna signal more force into the ground and tell his body to jump higher. Let's see it, head over the rim, come on. Oh! Oh! Sh okay, you gotta go. Be careful right now and check. They, someone check him out. Someone. Okay, he went. He went hard for YouTube. Make sure he's not. Make sure he's not bleeding. The point is that jump went higher than the others. So if you can't dribble in and dunk, the arms won't be free. So Fernando, it may look silly, but this, this helped us to be able to, like, I don't have to have coordination. I can just go up and spring 
and put it in like that. But it wasn't from doing that. When I got first left right, I had to get a lot of technique and like try to get a one hand dunk. So now Fernando, get a couple two foot jumps each, right, left, and left, right. Just aggressive. So this is a football player. Doesn't need to have a ball. Boom. This is gonna put more force into his body to jump higher. Watch the arms free. So watch that with the arms. I'll show you a low level version. Let me see Xavier. I'll show you a low level version. And then uh, the best individual right, left, and left, right in the gym will go together. So watch with the ball and the hands. No arms free. Just have to be able to power up. Can't get the arms. Alyssa's gonna throw me an alley-oop. I, no, I can't test her fast, we'll see. Hoping for the best. Alyssa's gonna throw me an alley-oop. But from the same angle, watch how the arms can help. So I'm gonna be able to jump higher. You gonna do it like right here? Yeah. Or you like it there? What do you want? This is a good bet right here. Regardless of what happens with the pass, this one I'm gonna be able to jump harder because my arms are free. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Oh! Yeah. Nailed it. Good job, man. All right, now we're gonna shoot these separately and try to put a dope collage together. See you in a few. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. You guys crushed that. Thank you. Still rolling? Perfect demonstrators. These guys crushed it. So you can see a ton of force goes into the body. So is that your best jump, left leg? Or do you jump two feet? All right, let's get in here. Pete's, Pete, as I told you earlier in the video, is an ATG member. We don't know what his jumping is like, but it'll be a journey. So for him, the first challenge would actually be to jump off all four plants. It could even be a rim tap. Do you know if you jump two foot or one foot? I usually jump one foot. One foot? Yeah, yeah. Then let's try, let's try rim tap, and we'll try all four plants rim tap. Okay. Yep. Right. So we'll go, you said you normally jump one foot? Yeah. So we'll go from here. You try to touch, you try to touch the rim. I'll get my reps in. Rim touch, left foot. I'm doing a legitimate workout for my, uh, just touching the rim, yeah. Yeah, curl the way I did. The reason I did this, you can watch, yep. There you go. Oh, nice, jump, good job. So, what I'm visualizing, I'm not a natural one foot jumper. High jump is, and they curl in like this. And actually, I wanna give my favorite inspirational stories, Stefan Holm, under six foot, Olympic gold medalist in the high jump. And the only high jumper I could find who squats with a full range of motion. And he did a lot of bounding, which is a form of jump balance. For a basketball player, now this one might be more challenging. For some guys, I've measured the differential like a right-handed player. Sometimes they'll be 13, as, high as, as much as 13 inches lower off the right leg. Okay. So you think you're an athlete, yeah. but now it's gonna be some cool montages to get that right leg. <laughs> so this is gonna make me a better athlete in the game of basketball. Best in history at this was Kobe Bryant. He's the only guy in NBA history that you can find footage of him looking good all four plants. All right, so now you're gonna try to jump off the right leg, touch with the left hand. Curl in the same way as if you're a high jumper. Yep, oh, that was your left leg. This is a perfect demonstration though. So you see how tough it is to get balanced. Give it another shot. So, that, so now you have to do two reps because he just did two reps off his left leg. I'll do another rep with you. So I'm a high jumper off the right leg. That, oh wow. All right, so now in the game of basketball, oftentimes a player will get open and they'll wonder, oh, why did I blow that? You even see this with wide receivers in football. Number one cause of drop balls for wide receivers is they can't jump. They think they can jump because they can jump off one leg, but imagine jumping a foot lower off the other leg. You're not as good of an athlete as you think. Exactly. So I'll be watching a wide receiver and it'll be like this and the pass goes and they wait and it goes overhead and the quarterback's like, what the heck? And the receiver's like, what the heck? And I'm like, receiver, you don't realize you can't jump. So you have to do another one off that right leg now. I'm gonna, go ahead, let's see that right leg. Oh, that was a two foot jump with the left right plant. It's so hard to get like, to get in my head to do it. Yep. So that's, that's the cool thing is there's no such thing as too little. So if you literally are just like, right leg. That's, that's something, that's force into the body. And it's the imbalance, it's one side being stronger, more elastic than the other. That's an extra cause of knee injury. So walk in and jump off that right leg. 
slow motion, stay kind of low as if you're running. Yep. That's it. There you go. But this is not, you can't reach as high this way. Yeah. You've got to reach now with the left. With the left? Okay. This is why some imbalances get into like the, like the spine. The and, and yeah. Stuff. Yeah, I, I always yeah. have like tightness in my hips and stuff. Yep. So walk in there again and ch touch with your right, your, that's it. Hey, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Now, now you got to go in with, like you saw Connor Barth, with a right left. So here, right left plant. Walk in if you have to. Let's see what you got. Yep, yep, nice, that was a good jump. Now, last thing for today, and then I think we'll be at the end of the video, I'll check my notes. So you gotta do the exact opposite. Okay. So now what Xavier did, Xavier went in with a left right plant, left hand. <laughs> All right. Yep, yep, oh, you reached with the wrong hand though. Oh, wow. One, yep, one more time. That was right left. Now you got you just earned two more reps. Son of a gun. So if you're wondering how many reps, I'm just checking my notes here to make sure I didn't forget anything crucial. If you're wondering how many reps of this to do, there's no such thing as too little. Think if you let's say you jump only on Sundays like we do. We work during the week, whatever we get out here within 10 on Sunday. Uh, if you did one jump on each plant, that's something. The next week you could do two. I mean, within 10 weeks, if you added one more each week, 10 off each plant. That's, that's like the limit that I would even allow. That is, I'll go up to 10 and it's pretty intense. All right, so here we go. Right and then left off. Yep, left, right, left, right. with right. the left hand. Yep, yep, nice, good. You got one more rep. If he doesn't add reps to his total, then he's out of here. You're doing good, yeah. This is gonna make those legs bounce here. Yeah, oh no, you just earned two more reps, son of a gun. <laughs> I'm kind of losing track now. It's his first time doing jump balance. So people are getting the, the full experience here. That was good. Yep. The best teacher is not me. The best teacher is watching yourself in slow motion. And actually on the app, you can actually send in your reps to Connor Dykes, the best at jump balance. And look, if someone wants to go out there and say, oh, I'm better and I, awesome. Please go for yeah, it. Yeah. Spread the word about jump balance. I think Connor Dykes is the best at it and you can actually send your reps into him. So that's the best teacher is studying the film and then, oh, that was right left again. Right left. Yeah. So you were here and you went like this. Now in the game, did you see when Xavier got that dunk? Yeah. He was dribbling in this way. So there was, if he would have taken one more step, the defense would have caught up. So that's why the, the, even in a game, the, the jump balance matters. That's it, that's it. All right, good. We'll leave it there. Okay. Good shit. Appreciate it, thank you. Last little teaching point that can be helpful. We're gonna watch someone who naturally does this and who this was the first person I saw doing this that I realized what was missing from my own jump. Marcus is, let's see the height right here. Okay. Uh, not six foot. I mean. I'm six one, so. About six foot. Now that, so let's see how high this guy can jump. Whoa! Now, when you watch the replay on that, you're gonna notice something. He doesn't jump straight-legged. This doesn't mean that a great jumper doesn't have the ability to jump straight-legged, but something that every great jumper naturally does on some jumps is the heel lifts. This likely indicates that on the approach, they're really using the hamstrings and the backside of the body a lot. So you'll see this on every great jumper, they have the ability to lift the feet, but then you'll often see on struggling jumpers, whether one or two foot, this the leg just, per the leg totally straight. I've coached hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of jump form videos for dunks. And it's one of the biggest things that people don't realize. And I think what's happening is you're running up to the rim because you're scared of, of, the, of like the, the velocity and the time in the air. So you're running up and then just trying to go straight up instead of getting like acrobatic in the air. So uh, it's something to watch in your jumps. It's a tip I had to share is that it can be a breakthrough by learning how to get some knee flexion in the air for more hang time. Theoretically, if you're healthy, if you have sled balance, zero alternatives, you might reach your goal of dunking. If you're not getting there, you may need more strength relative to your body. Squat balance. If you're still not getting there, 
or you want to now master all the plants, now you have the subject of jump balance. We did our best. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. Let's go. Shooting lessons coming next week. We're not going to say how many tries that one. <laughs>